Hi, dear. Hi. What are you doing? Well, I guess I'm still got the shaky hand from holding the phone for an hour and a half. It's definitely a phone call that I have never thought we would ever encounter. I don't know if I'm with our or... child, especially Jonah. Yesterday, we received a call from Jonah that was, you know, rather disturbing. Uh, we could definitely tell that something was off. It turns out that Jonah had taken Delta-8, which is a synthetic marijuana, and had a really bad reaction to it. it. It's a substance that is, you know, not regulated by the FDA or government or anything, and it's perfectly legal. And this, this chemical, this drug, is so scary because it's so available. I don't know if I'm mad or upset or like pissed off. We was going on talking and then all of a sudden he just got really upset and he said, Dad, I don't know. I don't know what I've done. I don't know I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what I've done. And I then that's when, you know, I call it the cold the cold chill. And he was just slurred and, and wasn't making sense. And I said, Jonah, are you drinking? Have you had something? What did y'all do tonight? He was not in his right state of mind, and we need to. You think he even knows we talked talk to, to him this evening? He kept telling me, "Dad, I'm scared. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you." I mean, ten or fifteen times, you feel like then that you got to help him. And then when he says, "I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what's going on." After hearing Jonah cry for help, and that sends me into panic. My question is, how do you get yourself set up in a situation like that? He's always been up front with us about this kind of stuff. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. How do you feel? You mad with him? I don't think mad is the word. It was terrified, scared. After being able to finally figure out where he was and, okay, there's a little bit of relief. I was eventually able to get Jonah to send me a screenshot of the map telling me where he was exactly. And, you know, honestly, that was finally some relief because Trent was able to find him, get him, and get him home safe. I just don't think we've ever seen in any of their personalities for them to do something like this. No, and but like really, we, but in like Jonah's we always said, but like we always say, everything Jonah does, he's the oldest. And everything he does is typically the first for us as parents. But I just don't think we ever thought Jonah would. Jonah's always so he overthinks everything. He he does struggle with anxiety. Yeah, Bad. he's very worried and anxious, and I never would have thought that he would have ever gotten himself into this predicament. We have to talk to Jonah. We have to figure out what's going on. Number one. And mom and dad and Jonah are going to get on a team and we're going to get a plan together. And the biggest thing is hoping that Jonah is going to be honest and just lay it out on the table exactly what went down. <laughs> Yesterday, we, you know, received a very disturbing call from Jonah. Um, Trent was able to, you know, find his location and get to him. Uh, now that we, you know, have him home and he has sobered up, we are going to talk to him and get to the bottom of this. Why don't you go sit down over there? I had gotten into some trouble, you know, I, I was high at the time and ultimately just needed guidance and my dad's help. But, you know, now that's all said and done and, um, you know, I, I got out of that situation, uh, um, I, I'm definitely going to have to explain myself to him.
Are you in trouble, number one? No. Me and a couple of friends heard about this sort of substance called uh, Delta 8 and read up on it. We, I mean, honest to God, did research. It's not prohibited. It's not illegal. Anybody over 21 can get it. Before taking uh, Delta-8, I thought it was a, um, you know, just a legal strand of cannabis. And um, the fact that I've heard, uh, you know, so little about it, it's definitely not a natural substance. It has to do with a lot of chemicals being brought into this. Um, and it, it, I've, I've lost all, you know, interest in even being around it. It's just too dangerous. What did you feel? I, re I remember bits and pieces of it. Like, you know, we all hit like a paranoia stage as to, you know, what's really going on. Or more so like we had an expectation as to when it was going to wear off and it never did. So that's honestly what freaked us out. Like that's what makes you, you know, a little paranoid. And we all reacted the same way. Right. It's kind so of help me follow this story. Let me, let me stop you once. How much did you take? I took the whatever it said on the bottle. I was like, well, I mean, so, so I just took whatever the recommended thing on the bottle said. <laughs> recommended. Apparently, Jonah's buddies, um, which we know them, and we know them very well, and they're good, good young men, very good young men, but uh, they're big guys. They're, they're, they're above average size big guys. I call it, we have David, which is Jonah, and we have the Goliath, and that's... Jonah's friends. Jonah's friends. You're four foot tall and 130 pounds, and your buddies are six foot two and 300 pounds. Yes. When we look at this as a little person thing, in Jonah's case, it was. His, his body size and his body mass compared to his friends, it is. But it's not just a thing about little people. Everybody. doesn't matter if, you're, if your spouse is a five foot three, 120 pound young lady, and you're a husband that's six foot tall and you're 250, you can't take the same amount of medicine. There's gonna be a little bit of a yeah. difference in the, the... But I mean, the way it was, it wasn't the difference in the way we acted. We all acted the same. It was more so the longevity of the duration it took to wear off. Yours took a long time to wear off. Yeah. You don't remember the phone conversation? You kept asking, where are you? I need to know where you're at. Where are you? What is the matter? And that's... And what, what state were, I mean, what were you feeling or thinking at that time? On the time? scale of one to 10, were you a five, you were halfway going up or coming down or whatever this feeling is, or was you I like- I like a 12. God, I'm wondering. I mean, like when dad was asking you that and your response was, you don't know, you don't know, you I don't know. So you were still pretty much maxed out, You don't I guess. remember that part. You were never ugly or rude, but when was the last it time? It was very. Uh, when was the last time you called me daddy? Paranoia. Yeah, and, you were scared. You were scared. You, were you didn't scared. know where I was going. You was upset. Couldn't tell me where you was at. Wanted me to come get you. I, I do remember uh, bits and pieces of the conversation and 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 basically what went on during that time, but. I ultimately knew if it was one thing I had to do was to call my dad because I knew out of everybody in this world I could I could rely solely on him. Won't happen again, but I just want to let you know. How that how do you like how do you know it won't happen again? I mean, I feel like is it's this something? A choice that you no, make. I know that and I understand that, but it's kind of like when people get super duper drunk and they don't drink for a long time because they're like, yep, don't want to feel like that. Yep, not happening. Not gonna do it, but you know, a few months goes by and you kind of forget. I wouldn't compare, that's not comparing apples to apples with this. This left a traumatic effect on all of us. Mm -hmm. I know what getting drunk is. I don't typically do that either on mm -hmm. a daily basis because yeah, it's not no, fun. Cause... But this was, you would have to, like, I mean, not that I'm saying, but you would have to endure it to know, okay, yeah, this is something that you would never want to do in your life. When I was talking to you, it was pretty much gut-wrenching for a parent. I honestly can say that the way you came into this world was the worst day of my life. You didn't come out alive and, 
And I mean, it was horrible. And for 22 years, that has been the worst day of my life. Jonah's birth, he couldn't breathe on his own. He was immediately intubated and he lived six weeks in a box um, in an incubator uh, with, you know, on life support. The longest two weeks of my life was doctors, all types of doctors and surgeons, telling us that really they did not know if Jonah would be able to overcome this. But I knew where you were. On the phone call, what we were hearing from you mixed in with we didn't know where you were became the worst day of my life. And, and as a parent, and until you are one, I guess you, you won't know the feeling, but as a parent, it doesn't get easier. Trust me, it doesn't. I put my parents in a position to where it put them in a state of just terror, very worried, um, uncertainty. It was just a, a bad ordeal and a bad mistake on everyone's part, um, uh, more, more importantly, mine. You want to spend the night? You want to invite you to spend the night? He wanted me to find a ass, find the ass. Because you needed to grow up. So I'm going to make... play the grow up card. <laughs> okay. Play the grow up card, but I can still invite you to spend the night. That's what fine. I told you was if you're not going to be a full time college student, if you're going to work, you're going to pay your rent or you're going to move out. That's what I told you. But I can still invite you to spend the night every now and then. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming to talk to us. You're welcome. Don't be too I love late. You, dear. Mm -hmm. Me. Glad that you came and told us, but hope that we never have to do this again. We are, I think, standing proof that never think that it's not going to happen to you because we can stand here today, thankfully, with a son that's alive and doing well to say that it can happen to you. Call us when you get home. Okay.